Well, I thought it'd be a good time to show you my um, wicking tub corn. It is, some of it is well above my head, eight feet tall, but you're in a 20 inch, 20 inch bucket. So, you know, it's not quite eight feet tall, six feet tall probably. Um, this is the uh, blue, let, let me look at my, look at my sticker there. That's the blue. The blue is not near as tall. I've got two of them of the blue corn. Now this is from Haas Tools. This is an Indian type corn, a decorative um, novelty corn. And I'm just doing, kind of doing the experiment to see if, see how well corn itself uh, does in wicking tubs. But also uh, my wife says she can sell at her place of business, she can sell the uh, red and blue and, and multicolored corn um, for about three or four dollars an ear so <laughs> you know me i'm gonna try to make a buck i figured it was worth it to uh give this a shot and it also lets let me know next year if i decide not to grow a, a field of corn you know a lot of corn it will let me uh it'll let me know that i can do maybe 10 uh 10 stalks of corn in each of these wicking tubs boy the stalks like i say the blue ones aren't aren't quite as big they're six feet tall minus the two foot or the 20 inch. Uh, so they're only, you know, four, four and a half feet tall. Uh, but these, man, that has got a nice, nice stalk. That stalk is as big around as a 50 cent piece. If, um, if you know what I said, 50 cent piece looks like. <laughs> we haven't seen any in a while. Uh, but really looks, looks nice. I've got a little bit of a probably... Uh, grasshopper damage on some of the leaves but and it is sprinkling right now so i need to get this done uh had great rain all night long oh my gosh i don't know this is this is wonderful uh to be in the middle of summer uh july uh, uh, september 1st is the really the middle of summer and to be getting this kind of rain in texas and as cool as it is right now i am loving this so anyway i want to fertilize my tubes are on the other side. I'm not going to fertilize down the tube right now because we've got a lot more rain planned and I'm afraid if I put some, um, uh, I've got some 1500 water soluble that I, that I have, that I have put down the tube in the past was going to do that. Now I've got a little bit left, I think enough to do this, but with all the rain we're getting, I was afraid the rain would come down and wash some of that fertilizer out of the weep hole the overflow hole most of you know what i'm talking about when i'm talking about wicking tubs here with the overflow hole got a couple of them that are lazy i need to stand up a little straighter but we've had some wind we've had some storms and such i need to uh actually need to wrap a string yeah i'll have to do that when i got two hands I actually could come in here and wrap a string around it and probably they would hold each other up i should have done that previously but they're starting to starting to tassel uh, right now and uh, so they don't have a whole lot taller to get but i i, I will i'll probably come out here and uh, uh, put some string on them but it like i'm saying normally i would feed water soluble down the tube the field tube but i'm afraid it's going to rain and if I, whatever fertilizer I have down in the water down at the bottom the water reservoir might have a tendency to to run out the the fill hole these are my my hybrid tubs that have the little spout on them if you don't know what I'm talking about how to make a hybrid tub look up there right about there right about now and I'll show you um, but so what I'm going to do I've got some triple 13 and I really would like to put something a little bit hotter than that but I'm not able to to disturb the soil. I, you know, I, I'm I'm just going to put it on top of the soil, and it's going to be pretty close to the roots. So I really don't want to. I'm scared to put very much. So I'm going to put about a about a half a cup of triple thirteen in this one wicking tub, and try not to get too close to the roots. Kind of kind of put it out in the center and. This one didn't have a lot of germination in the actual center of the uh, of the wicking tub, so I can kind of get away with that. 
uh, really need to come in here. I didn't bring a trowel with me. Come in here and just, just kind of turn the soil over and incorporate it into the soil. That's the best practice, and I will do that after you leave. But this one here, I do have some. I just don't want to burn it. It looks so good. I hate to, hate to burn it. So I'm going to do about a half a cup. And I'm just going to just liberally, sporadically uh, try to, you know, stay away from the roots and try to, but try to be even handed with it all over the, the stuff. And hopefully that'll work. Now, again, this is triple 13. I'm getting a, a 20, 20, 20 from Haas that I've put down the spout a couple of times but I'm out and I've been putting also a, a, a 1502 uh, Chilean nitrate, which is what I finished off my other corn with and it just was wonderful. I mean, was wonderful. So uh, I'll have to do a few more things to this corn after I fertilize it and uh, not right now, but at some point, and I'll show you at some point, I'm gonna hand pollinate just in case I'm gonna hand pollinate this. No sense growing it if you're not gonna grow a, a big ear. A filled out ear, especially if you're filling it out for decorative purposes, you want that, if it's a blue ear of corn, you want those blue kernels uh, all over it. You don't want just some of it. So I'll hand pollinate it. I'll hand uh, fertile, I'll hand um, uh, put insecticide on each ear. I mean, when when it starts showing ears, as soon as I get a little silk, I'll put uh, I'll put my uh, my stuff on it, whether I use pyrethrin or uh, uh, seven. I'm not sure. Uh, seven seven is makes it for sure, but pyrethrin is more of a organic product. Anyway, I just want to show you I am fertilizing. Uh, when the rain stops, and it's going to be another week, they say, we're going to be getting rain for a week here in August, or August, early September. Wonderful, marvelous, marvelous, not griping. Uh, when the rain stops, though, then I'll, I'll put some of the Chilean nitrate down the tube. And with what I've got on top, this uh, that on top may not be enough, so that's what I'm going to do it down here. But it does need fertilizer because it's starting to... Um, uh, starting to tassel and that's when you need to do that last fertilizing is when it starts tasseling i'm fixing to get wet and i don't want my phone to get wet so i'm going to go now but just want to show you the fertilize and uh show you the corn that gum is looks good i mean i am really pleased uh i'll show you obviously when i get ready to harvest but i'll probably show you when i pollinate and when i um uh, doctor up the silk for earworms. It's the summertime. Earworms are going to be tough. So um, it's it's uh, I, I would think. So I'm going to try to take care of that and try to make me some really really nice ears of decorative corn. One of them's blue. One of them's red. One of them is a bicolored or tricolored. Got a lot of different kernels in it. So we are fertilizing the corn in the wicking tubs. Got some triple thirteen in there. And I'll finish up the rest of these. It's starting to rain a little bit harder, sprinkle a little bit harder. And I need to try to stand some of these up a little better. And I need to wrap a string around them. Won't do that today because it's raining, but I will try to do that in the next day or two. So that's it. We're fertilizing corn. When it stops raining, we'll get a little bit more of the chili and nitrate water soluble down the hole and down in the water reservoir at the bottom. All right, that's it. We're gone.